Yeah, in this eighth week, you know, rather than the beginning of the eighth week, we'll be slowly getting into actual faults which occur in rotating machines. So far, of course, you know, we had actually, you can think of with the prerequisites to finding out faults in machines, be it signal processing, little bit of virus and analysis, noise monitoring, instrumentation, transducers and so on. And now, uh, starting this week, we'll be mostly focusing on faults in rotating machines and then what are the common types of faults in rotating machines and uh, what are the other effects of the faults in machines and then particularly the techniques which are predominantly used to find out faults in these machines. So, before we get into the actual faults, let me give you an overview of the possible faults in a rotating machine. Now, if you realize essentially any rotating machine is actually a combination of a prime mover okay, which is mounted on a foundation and prime mover could be a motor or an engine which is coupled onto a mechanical driven unit. which is again put on a foundation. Now, each of these machines would have a rotating shaft which I am drawing by this red line. There could be many such rotating shafts and so on. And of course, these shafts are supported on bearings. etcetera. So, this is your prime mover which could be an electrical or electric motor an IC engine wherever we do not have a power source people use uh, an IC engine for example, in remote areas you know like a uh, petrol engine, diesel engine you, know, you must have seen of course, in India we get to see a lot of portable pump sets. Um, another example is you know the pump sets used by fire trucks you know, if they are going to rescue etcetera we may not have a source of electrical power. So, IC engines are also used, but as you will see you know throughout the world about 90 percent of the prime movers are actually electrical motors. It could be AC motor, DC motor depending on the type of application which is driva driving a mechanical unit. Which could be example could be a blower in the last class, I had shown you a photograph of a blower where we are doing noise monitoring and this blower is actually driven by an electrical motor. It could be a pump, it could be a gearbox for speed reduction, it could be a fan etcetera. Okay. And uh, this may have you know gear smashing, a step up, step down, there could be pulleys ok. So, this is one rotating shaft. This is another rotating shaft. This is known as the non drive end bearing and this is the drive end D bearing 
and this is a coupling. This could be a pulley, this could be a gear, okay, and then we have this is the obviously the foundation. another foundation. So, this gives you a generic representation of a rotating machine which is being driven by an electrical motor. Now, keeping this picture in mind, we will see what are the possible faults which can occur in this machine. I am going to list down the faults later, but let me first explain to you through this diagram that what possibly could be a fault in this machine. For example, this shaft between the driven and driving shaft, they all should be concentric and in the same straight line. That may not happen because of one foundation foot being softer than the other, there could be a little change in the angle. So, this will give rise to a fault which is known as misalignment. I am just showing this in one plane. So, this misalignment could be either a parallel misalignment or an angular misalignment where the shafts are skewed. So, this is parallel or this is angular. Then this, this, so the coupling will also get affected. Now, there could be defects in the bearings, we will talk about later on defective bearings. What do you mean by defective bearings? There are you know, as you know bearings are rolling elements which will support a load and this rolling elements are supposed to rotate and give less friction and carry the load, but if there is any foreign particle present in the races of the bearing, the frictional forces would increase, the heat generation because of this frictional forces would increase and eventually because of the heat, the lubricant could get baked and they would form hard carbon residues which could score the races of the bearings and the bearings would be damaged. So, these are possible gears could be defective, the gear tooth could be chipped, could be broken, could be worn out, pulley could be unbalanced. Okay. Shafts, they are supposed to be uniformly homogeneous rotating uh, components, which can have unbalance. Now, you will see, so cracks will having unbalance, cracks are having uh, misalignment. Now, these components like gears which are mounted on the shafts or the pulleys, they could be loose. So, whatever I am writing in blue are actually the defects which can happen. The foundation you can have what is known as a soft foot. Okay. Then another fault which can occur is uh, things could be loose, which I have told. Now, these shafts because of some defects or weak spot, because they are loading uh, the, while they are rotating they get loaded and unloaded, there could be cracks in the components. Okay. So, if I was to list down some of the common faults in rotating machines. One is unbalance, either in any of the rotating component. You can imagine a shaft which is rotating at very high speeds and if you look at the 
if there is an unbalanced mass the force would be m e omega square r so but at very very high sp speeds you can realize the radial forces which come uh, from this uh, unbalance are extremely high and this could load the bearings and then bearings could get eventually damaged let me give you a sense of the orientation which we talk about now in this figure here any direction uh, along the length of the machine is known as longitudinal or axial anything in the vertical is vertical and anything in the plane of this paper is horizontal okay so if you look at the radial plane from look at the side view so this is your vertical and this is your horizontal i will denote as so this is h so this is your radial plane and this is your axial axis so as i as you know vibration at any point in a three dimensional point can be represented by three directions axial vertical horizontal and in the vertical and horizontal it is still the same radial plane okay now what happens if there is an unbalance the vibrations in the radial plane would be high and they would give rise to a very high reaction forces on the bearings now another important fault is misalignment the geometric centers of the two shafts which are joined at a coupling may not be same so this misalignment can be parallel or angular now another component is the shafts could be having cracks they could be loose and then there could be bearing defects there could be gear defects and another component if if one component was just rubbing against another component it can create a lot of high frequency noise and streak rubs so these are some of the common faults in rotating machines but then here i have not discussed some of the other related faults what are the related faults defects in the machine casing could be a structural crack okay leaks out of seals and gaskets foundation soft okay then of course something related is you know this was in terms of the prime mover faults prime mover faults so if you look at the power supply the electrical motor fault we we can we can further break it up what could the motor fault the motor bearing fault we will discuss this in later on the stator winding fault 
rotor winding fault eccentricity between the rotor and the stator. Of course, the eccentricity can also be there in the rotating machines. Okay, so, there could be. So, these are some of the faults of course, and if you have an IC engine, the IC engine faults. So, with this kind of an overview of the different faults which are occurring in machines, we will now in the later classes try to see how these faults can be identified mostly as I was telling you through vibration monitoring, but since 90 percent of the machines in the world today are actually driven by electrical motors, a technique called motor current signature analysis can be used to find out motor faults and then faults in mechanical machines being driven by electrical motors. In fact, you know we were the pioneers about two decades ago at IIT Kharagpur to find out faults in uh, mechanical machines like you know gearboxes, submersible pump through a technique known as the motor current signature analysis and details of these you can find out at our website where you will be refer to um, papers on this area you, know, you can you can google me and go to my google scholar scholar citations and get the relevant uh, papers on mcsa for finding out faults in electrical machines that's those of you who want to do a little bit of more uh, self study and reading uh, one good source is just you know where we have been successfully done uh, tool condition monitoring then is a uh, gearbox faults and uh, submersible pump faults because I will just give you an idea. Imagine all of you know that uh, we can put an accelerometer on a mechanical unit and uh, get its vibration response, do a signal analysis and find out the fault in that mechanical unit. But imagine if a submersible pump which is you know, 50 meters under the ground and there is no way we can access such a submersible pump to put an accelerometer how do we monitor the condition of such a submersible pump. So, actually it is this motor current signature analysis which we can very easily do from a remote location just by having a what is known as an hall effect sensor to measure the current waveform which is being drawn by the submersible pump and these uh, currents are actually modulated. So, by doing a demodulation of the measured current which is driving the submersible pump motor, we can actually find out the faults in the submersible pump. So, these are very powerful techniques which we will come in detail uh, later on we will discuss about them in detail. Right? Now, question is we have seen the list of the faults which occur in machines you know, for your benefit. I want to put this uh, slide back again. So, these are some of the common faults which occur 
in rotating machines. Now, the question is why did it happen in the first place? So, you must have some idea why such faults occur. One is wrong design. I am using the st statement wrong design or some conditions overlooked by the designer. Designers incorrect installation of machine. Because as you know in a machine there are many components which rub against each other. Okay. So, if things meet and rub okay, obviously because of this force there will be a lot of heat generation and to liberate the seat or reduce the friction people put lubricant. So, in a regular schedule maintenance such lubricants are actually changed or it is ensured that the lubricants always exist. So, I would say some of the reasons why faults occur is improper maintenance. Okay. Because you know that could mean uh, maybe less lubricant wrong power supply because of the electrical supply frequency. Many of the motors which we prime movers are run they are supposed to be supplied with an electrical supply. Now, imagine if the speed of the motor is related to the uh, power supply frequency we can have a speed fluctuation and which will endure or induce torsional oscillations. So, improper electrical power supply another is wrong operating conditions. I will give you a good example of the uh, particularly in India. Uh, the reason I mention India uh, specifically is because you know, these videos are being watched uh, worldwide uh, because from the emails I get from students uh, from Australia, from Africa, from Europe. I realize you know everybody is watching these videos. Uh, so, my examples uh, relate to things in India. See in India we have uh, trucks, uh, lorries which carry sand you know sand from the river bed uh, to the construction sites and if you be on the highways you will see many uh, places the truck axle would have broken down because of the reason that the truck operator has uh, loaded his uh, truck with more than the design payload of the sand. You know, the more sand they carry, the more money they can make, but they do not realize that they are overloading the load carrying capacity of the axle of a truck. You know, we have 25 ton trucks, we have 6 ton trucks okay, and we have still very heavy trucks and uh, dump trucks in mining industries you know carrying 240 tons. We have the axles, uh, the, the railway wagons uh, which carry iron ore, coal etcetera and in, in India I must tell you of safe design limit to the axles in railroads is about 30 tons per axle. So, when a designer designs an equipment we have to keep these numbers into account. So, somebody has uh, or more load than designed for load then designed 
four. So this can happen. So uh, it is not the fault of the condition monitoring engineer that uh, why this has happened. So these are some of the reasons. Okay, and uh, this could be endless depending on the case studies. Maybe you do not have the enough finance to have the right tool. Maybe your uh, operators not trained, not properly trained, trained. So, I am not denying that this will not happen. This will happen despite our best uh, maintenance efforts, best, befo best efforts. But even if this has occurred, my machines are going to have these faults. It could be a combination of these faults. It could be only this fault. But all these faults have ramifications into the productivity of the plant. I recall my very first lecture on machinery maintenance productivity of the plant is going to get seriously affected because of such faults which have occurred in the machine or in the plant. So, we as condition monitoring engineers our objective is to detect or diagnose the rotating machine fault and we will in the subsequent classes we will go one by one to each of these faults find out the telltale signs by vibration monitoring how such faults can be detected and maybe little bit of MCSA and recently which we have also done is through thermal imaging. So, this lecture actually sets the ball for the next uh, maybe two weeks what where we are going to discuss all these kinds of faults and how these faults can be detected and then uh, we will see our machines are healthy. So, more of these uh, you could uh, find in my book and at this website iitnoise.com. Thank you.